Today is May 28, 2013. We are at the Effingham DAV Club in Effingham, Illinois. Uh, my name is Cheryl Walker and I will be interviewing Thomas Springer. Thomas was born on 4 5 1946 in Effingham, Illinois. Mr. Springer, can you state for the record what branch of service you were in? Uh, the United States Army. And you were enlisted and during the time of June 4th, 1964 until August 1973, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, can you tell us what the highest rank you were? Uh, Staff Sergeant, B6. Okay, would you like to share your story? Uh, yes. Okay, can you tell us where you uh, took your basic training? Uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Okay, and you enlisted? Yes. And do you remember when you decided to enlist? Uh, I was still in high school. Uh, in fact, I was in the Army about uh, a week after high school, after graduation. What made you decide to enlist? <clears throat> I don't know. I thought about it for um, quite a few years before I got out of high school. All my brothers were in the service, and it was the thing to do. So what was your MOS? Uh, my primary MOS was, uh, at the time, I believe it was called 059, and it was changed to 05K, which was a teletype intercept operator. So tell us a little bit about what you did and where you went and things well, like that. Well, after basic training, I uh, took uh, training at Fort Devens in Massachusetts. Uh, after that, I went to uh, Asmara, Ethiopia, CAG News Station. Was there uh, 14 months. Uh, I re-enlisted while I was in Africa. Uh, from there, I went to... Uh, California, a place called Two Rock Ranch. Uh, and uh, from there, I uh, volunteered to go to Vietnam. And I went to Vietnam for a year, uh, came back, uh, went back to California of all places, the same place. And uh, a couple times I've, I went, had more schooling at Fort Devens. But uh, basically after, uh, well, I took some training at, uh, from California. I took uh, some more training at uh, Fort Devens and there went to Germany for four years. And it's about time I, well, I got married in between there and I had a couple of kids. And, and uh, after Germany, we decided uh, it was time to <laughs> to move on, really, to get out of the Army and raise a family. What did you do in Ethiopia? Uh, there again, I was, we were teletype intercept operators. We uh, basically listened in on uh, foreign countries and for security reasons, I don't, you know, well, I don't, they don't use teletype anymore, but at one time, we used to listen in on uh, foreign countries and try and pick up anything that would be that would harm the United States. So, was it like um, when you say teletype? What was that? What kind of equipment was that? Well, we had radios to intercept the, the signals, and they were actually teletype signals. Back then, a lot of the countries used. Uh, teletype for communication. Was it like SOS, you know, that type of, you know, dot, 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 dot? Uh, there, no, it was actually type written, you know, just like you use on your computer, like you're typing a letter, but it was sent over uh, teletype. And we recorded it, and there was also some voice that we listened to also, but... We listened for anything that was, that you know, was detrimental to the United States. 
Is that the same type of, of when you say teletype, is that the same type of um, equipment that if you're hearing impaired that you would use to send talk uh, on the phone? That I'm not sure, but it's similar to like if you sent a telegram, you know, like they used to send a telegram, they would, you know, send a message. Mm -hmm. But back then, they, you know, it was just constantly a messaging from one person to another or, you know, diplomats, who knows, but we'd kind of snoop in. Did you, um, was there an a Army base, a U.S. base there? Yes, there field? was. Okay. Yeah, it's not there anymore, but it, there was at that time. What was the climate like in Ethiopia? Well, pretty warm at times. It was uh, very good duty. We were uh, seven on, four off or something like that. And then we could go down to the Red Sea kind of on the weekends or whatever. It's kind of enjoyable. What, um, when you traveled down to the Red how see how far was that? from where you were? Uh, probably oh, 60, 80 miles, something like that. Did you have it, personal vehicles? Uh, yes, we did have personal vehicles. Uh, or at that time, you could even rent a Jeep from, uh, uh, I forgot what they call it, but you could rent a Jeep and You know, it was, we'd usually just camp out on the beach for a day or two and swim, fish, and go back. It was pretty enjoyable. What kind of, you know, when you talk about fish, what kind of fish would you catch down there? Oh, uh, shark, sand sharks. Uh, I caught a, a manta ray one time. Uh, there's crabs and all kinds of, you know, it's just, it's a real salty sea. And I mean, you can, basically you can float, but it gets pretty warm. Uh, I do remember one time we were there and uh, the U.S. Navy had a ship in and it was, I want to say like 130 degrees. <laughs> and uh, they had, you know, on a ship, you know, it gets pretty warm. And they actually had sailors laying on the deck, packed in ice because it was just so hot. Wow. And humid. I mean, you could hardly move. That is hot. That is real hot. Yeah, it, the sea wouldn't even be cool. No, no, it's almost too hot to swim. Hmm. The sand must have been unbearable. <laughs> yeah. What um, was there? Sightseeing to do there? Uh, not much. Uh, it's very mountainous, mountainous area. And uh, I do remember one time we uh, hiked up this mountain, a single mountain that uh, had a monastery on the top of it. It was kind of interesting. Hmm. But it was a rugged climb. It was uh, probably... Oh, three, four thousand feet. So you know it's, and one thing about you know even Asmara, it was took a little while to get used to because it is on a mountain and the air is a little thin. So it took a few days to get used to you know breathing the, without a lot of oxygen. Did you get sick? No, no, just slow, tired. You know, not. Took a while to get used to. Um, did you have barracks to stay in? Yes, we did. Yeah, we had barracks. Uh, we had a movie theater. We had a, uh, well, there was an NCO club and an EM club. Uh, the EM club, I think the first year, I, I used to play bingo. It didn't cost you anything to play, but you could win. Uh, one guy actually won a car, an Alfa Romero. Was, but they, they gave away 
real good gifts, you know, for playing bingo. And that was in the EM club. And what's the EM club? Uh, enlisted Men's Club. Okay. That would be a nice gift to well, bring home, yes, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. <laughs> I guess that wasn't you. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> no. Um, how did you get there? Did you fly? Yes. Did you take ship? Uh, we flew... Uh, I can't really remember, out of, I think it was New Jersey, but I'm not sure. But uh, we stopped in uh, Athens, Greece. Uh, we took a little tour. Short, there was like a three or four hour layover. We also stopped in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, short stop there and you in Cairo at that time we weren't allowed out of the uh, the terminal or anything and we couldn't wear military uniform we also we had to go in civilian clothes at that time for your whole trip yes and why was that well pro I think probably at that time and I'm not really sure but they didn't really care for U.S. military or the U.S. relations wasn't that good anyway. I don't believe in Egypt, but uh, we weren't allowed to wear a uniform. So um, after Ethiopia, you came back to the States. Yes. Very interesting. Also, I came back on an Air Force jet, which was a uh, good sized jet, but it was used for uh, photo mapping missions where they could fly over and take pictures of just about anything they wanted to. It was very interesting. We, uh, at that time, also they said we was going to land in New York, which we flew over New York and we could look in this, through this monitor or whatever, you know, and actually see like the Statue of Liberty and, and all this and they kept on flying. Mm, excuse me. Kept flying and kept flying and we ended up in Albany, Georgia. <laughs> Do you know so, why you didn't stop in New York? No. No, I don't. They never did tell us, but we got out in Albany, Georgia and this guy I was with that we, he came back the same time I did. Uh, we had to hitchhike to Atlanta. <laughs> uh, never been in Albany, Georgia. It's not much there, but the Air Force Base. And, it, it and they just said, your trip's over. Yeah, here you are. And, and then but, what, how come you had to get to Atlanta? Well, so we could catch a flight back home, but and then we got to Atlanta, and uh, they this friend I was where guy I was with, he got a flight to Chicago, and I had to take a bus. They didn't have a flight to St. Louis. I'd had to either had to go to Chicago or took a bus. So I took a bus <laughs> and rode. And road and road. <laughs> and but that wasn't the end of your service, was it? No, no, no. That was no. just that was just the first no, really my first tour. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that I, that's when I I went to uh, well I got married while I was home and then we went to California. And in California uh, where did you go? Uh, it was Petaluma, California, the two rock ranch station. Uh, the Two Rock Ranch is still there now, but it's a uh, Coast Guard station now. It's just the uh, well, I, and I'm sure it's because they don't use the communi type of communications today that they they did back when I was in. So was it a large base, that you, army base that mm, you were on? No, so. not in California. No. Uh, Not real big. I, uh, hmm. I couldn't really tell you how many 
uh, troops we had there, but it wasn't a lot. I mean, I would say less than a thousand. And did you live on base at that time? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I lived off base first, and then finally, when I when there was an opening, I, I did get on base. And that was in married quarters. Yes. Okay. Were those t talking about married married quarters? Were they houses? Were they duplexes? What were they? Uh, they were. Uh, hmm. Trying to think, there would probably be like four families in a in a well, it'd be more like an apartment house, you know. But but there was probably about four to to a unit, and they had I don't know eight or ten of those units, I think. Did you um? So at that point, it was just you and your wife. Yes, and we had a daughter while we was there also, so. Okay. Um, was it easy to form friendships with other married couples or? Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. We really had a pretty nice time there. And I think that's uh, when I, 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 when I left there, I went to Vietnam and when I came back from Vietnam, I requested to go back there. I, we really enjoyed it there. Your wife didn't stay there? No, she came back here to Effingham while I was in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in Vietnam? One year. One year. And you were, um, where in Vietnam were you located? Well, we landed in Benoit or Long Bend, and from there we went to uh, Saigon, which, and at the time I arrived, it was just, uh, I think it was like the 8th of January, which was just a few days after the Tet Offensive was going on there. And uh, from there I went to, uh, back to Long Bend, and then I uh, went to Zeon, was assigned to the 1st Infantry Division. And uh, the company was in Zeon and there went to a forward platoon in Lai K. And I was there for uh, probably six to eight months. And then was they sent me back to uh, Long Bend. And I was with a, uh, a company there. Uh, I can't think, I can't remember that company. I was there just a short time. So how many communication um, specialists were they, were there in a company? In, uh, well, in uh, the company, probably close to 300. I'm not real sure about that, but See, the company, we had uh, two floor, forward platoons. And the forward platoon, we had uh, probably about 20 guys. So when you became a forward platoon, 20 of you would go out together? Well, yes. Well, I mean, they were, it was kind of a setup already there. But, and there, uh, they had a uh, command, or along with the, at Lai K was the 1st Infantry Division headquarters. So we supplied them with information that we received. And there I worked with uh, airborne direction finding. I, you know, it was very interesting. I didn't fly, other guys would fly and they would, you would pick up a radio signal here and then they would talk with somebody else somewhere else and they would 
shoot angles to get a location and then they would send it back well they would send it back to me and from that we could decide whether it was how strong that that outfit was the enemy outfit or if it was a company size or just platoon or whatever and then we'd re relay that information directly to the uh, to the general the first infantry division and then they would decide what action to take. So it was your information that the general was relying on. Yes. It was we could supply your... them with whereabouts of enemy troops or whatever. Just through their them just by using communications. We couldn't probably didn't understand what they were saying or what they were sending, but just for them sending a signal, we could locate that signal by using different different shots at it. Now, did you have to learn the language? No. You didn't no. have to take any foreign language? No, I did not. Uh -huh. uh, when I was in Ethiopia, we had certain words. We had a list of certain words that we listened, you know, we could pick up on and tell uh, what they were talking about. But as far as speaking a language or really understanding it, I, we couldn't do that. But there, you know, we did have linguists there also that did, but that wasn't any of my, you know, anything I've done. That'd be difficult. Well, it wasn't really. It, if I could do it, anybody could do it. I was thinking, yeah. Um, did you? Ever take an R and R when you were in Vietnam? No, I year? did not. No. Mm -hmm. How was the communication home? You had a young baby, and you know your well, wife. It was tough, but we uh, a lot of letters. That's that's the only thing we had back then was just mail. Mm -hmm. Did um, did you ever have any? Um, Entertainment come over? Uh, yes. Bob Hope came over. Uh, and at that time, it was at Long Ben, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Or Ben Wall, one of the two. But it was a, uh, we had to, it was a tough trip to go see. Him. And once there, it was extremely hot and there were, thousands of soldiers there and it was just you know it was really really hard to see because I mean you're always a long way away <laughs> now you said something about you were in Saigon did you just land there were you there for a while uh, I was there probably just uh, maybe two weeks that was uh I want to say the battalion headquarters, which we had to go through that and then was sent out to a company. Did you have to stay on base there? Uh, at that time, it was yes, because it was, it was like I said, it was right after Tet Offensive and uh, things were still a little crazy there and uh, quite a few people got killed in, during the Tet Offensive there in Vietnam. Uh, so we didn't, yeah, we, you know, once, I think we, we went from uh, on truck from from there to uh, Benoit, but it was like in a convoy. It wasn't, uh, you didn't walk around the streets anywhere. So after Vietnam, <clears throat> again, you came back, you were stationed in California. Yes. And then you went to Germany. Uh, yes, I went back, actually I went back to Fort Devens, Massachusetts for training 
in uh, what they called electronic warfare, which uh, we did uh, jamming of enemy signals, whatever, tra radio traffic, whatever. We could jam it or, or we could uh, find enemy locations by uh, their communications. But it was all electronically done. It was that was pretty interesting. And how long was that training? Uh, I think it was like three months before I went to Germany, and that's well, what I'd done in Germany. But it was all uh, in Germany. It was uh, exercises with our own troops. There were so many U.S. forces in Germany at that time that they're constantly. Uh, in training, just constantly. Now, um, did you get to take your family to Germany? Yes, I did. And where were you stationed at in Germany? At Augsburg. That's uh, fairly close to Munich, but uh, I'd say maybe an hour, hour, an hour or two. And um, how long were you in Germany? It's four years. So quite a while. Yes. Yes, I, when I went over, I really only had uh, three years left on my enlistment. And to get my family over there, I had to extend a year to, to get the fourth, you know, to fill out four years. Well, that was worth it. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did you live on base there? No. They had actually, uh, uh, I don't believe anybody lived on a base. Uh, they had government quarters. Uh, where just about everybody stayed in. There was so many, let's see, there was so many different uh, places there that uh, I mean, it was like a small community. It was just all Army people, or when they also had Air Force people. But yeah, they were all, you know, where all the families stayed in certain areas mm -hmm. in government housing is what you know you call it. But they were pretty decent. I think we lived on the fourth floor, which <laughs> had no elevators, so. <laughs> But it, it wasn't too bad. Did you get to take your own furniture and things like uh, that? We did not. No, we uh, used government furniture. They furnished it. And, but I, I mean, I guess you could have. But at the time, we were, we didn't have a lot of stuff, so we didn't. We brought a lot of seems like a lot of things back, but we didn't take over a lot. Um, did your kids, were they in school at that time? No, 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 they weren't in school. I, they were about to start school the time I got out of the service. That's one of the reasons why I got out to this. Kids were starting to school and I didn't want to drag them all over the world. Um, did you find that you made a lot of lasting friendships? Uh, I made a, quite a few, yes. Yes. Now, do does she, the field, the special duties uh, that you were in, the communications, did, do they have reunions? Uh, yes. Do you go to those? Def no, I don't. Most of them are... Uh, uh, either in Massachusetts or California or, you know, they're just, uh, a few years ago I did receive an invitation to one I think they had in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, but I wasn't able to go to it. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, the, the time that you spent 
in Germany? Did you get to travel a lot and see the country? We saw quite a bit. Uh, Munich, went to Dachau, a concentration camp. I used to go there quite often. They, they had a, uh, a pond there where you could fish for trout. But it was probably one of the most eerie places I've ever been in my life. Really? I mean, it's they, it's haunting. I mean, I guess it's a, it's different. I mean, just as soon as you drive in the compound there, it's you can feel what went on there. It's a really sad place. And they do have uh, kind of a museum. Uh, I don't hate to call it a museum, but they do have some slings still there, an old barracks and different places. And but uh, well, even while you're, you know, you're on the other side of the fence, it's well, you know, in the area where we were fishing and stuff, it's quiet and. Erie. Uh, we did go to Garmisch. Pretty nice skiing area. I don't ski, but we did vacation there. We used to go on these, uh, what they call Volks marches. Different uh, little uh, communities that have these marches where people just, you go and you walk through the woods and these trails or whatever. Then when you're done, they give you a medal, a walking medal, you know. And of course you sit down and drink a beer with the, the locals. And I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it, you, what kind of medals did you receive? Uh, just your basic medal, so the uh, uh, good conduct medal, of course, and the uh, Vietnam service ribbons. Do you remember the day that you uh, got out of the service? Yes, I do. Very much so. <laughs> Was that a day where it was just, I'm done? Uh, pretty much so, yes. Uh, I got out in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, as a matter of fact, and uh, my wife wasn't with me at the time. But I, from there, I went down to California and visited some old friends, that, some old Army buddies and some other people there in Petaluma that I've known over the years. And then I went to Los Angeles and I have a sister who lives there. I got to visit them. And went through Las Vegas and came home. <laughs> but it was, I was kind of happy to be done. And I, I must say too, that the, about that time, all the uh, communications, all the stuff that I did is, was being drastically changed. You know how much it is today. I mean, cell phones and what, you know, computers and everything. I mean, we didn't have that back then. It was all basic stuff, you know, Morse code and teletype, like I said, but you know, they don't have that anymore. And it was so a lot of it was changing, and I, I, I'm sure they don't even have my MOS at all anymore. So, then I'd have to learn something new all over. So, <coughs> if someone came to you, I, I don't know, maybe some of your, um, one of your children have said to you um, that they wanted to join the service. Has any of your children joined the service? No, they haven't. Okay. No. Would you recommend to someone young to join the service? 
it's hard to say today what's going on with uh, Afghanistan and who knows what's going to happen in Syria. Uh, that's that are you know I I enjoyed my time in there and you know and I wouldn't I wouldn't change it any other way you know I'm, I'm glad I done it uh, but at that time even Vietnam was going on but I I don't know I had a different outlook then I guess I was kind of invincible young and, but uh, I don't know. It'd be tough to recommend to you know somebody I know real well to. Um, after being in the service for almost ten years, was it a, hard to adjust to civilian life and civilian employment? Mainly is what I'm. Uh, no, not really. Okay. No. Uh, when I first got out, I mean, I was kind of lucky. My father-in-law owned a paint store, and I worked for him for a short time, and and then I got into the printing company, which we had here in Effingham. I was lucky enough to to get on there, and I stayed in there 20 years. So. Have you ever been back to Germany? No. No, I haven't. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, I don't. I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, Tom, I would like to take this opportunity to a thank you for the time that you served our country and for the time that you put. Um, that you put into our serving, serving in our armed forces. And I would also like to thank you for the time that you gave me today and giving me the honor to interview. Well, you're quite welcome. I enjoyed it. Thank you.